Coming up on Mount News this morning, one Eastern Kentucky city addresses an issue regarding invasive plant species on its trails. And as local record stores prepare for a busy day of sales, there may not be enough vinyl to go around. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News this morning. Good morning to you. It's 531 and it's Tuesday. I'm Dakota Makris. Thanks for waking up with us. And if you're going to head out the door after the newscast so everybody can leave at 7 o'clock, you may have to take that ring gear with you, Brandon. Because yes. so here's the thing. You may not need it right now in your area, mm -hmm. but I guarantee at some point in the next few hours you will need it. Let's take a look and see what, who's seeing rain at this moment. And we've got to go to live pinpoint Doppler radar for that. Some heavier bands down near the Kentucky-Tennessee line. So if you're over toward southern Whitley County there, going across Jellicoe Mountain into Tennessee on I-75. If you're going from US-27 from Pine Knot in McCree County over to Scott County, Tennessee. If you're going from Wayne County over into uh, Jamestown, over that area there on 127. You're running some heavy rain if you're going through parts of uh, Bell County, coming out of the tunnel there from Middlesboro into Claiborne County. You're going to hit some heavy rain this morning, and you see more of it is on the way. So we're not quite done with this yet. Your northern counties might be a little bit more done than the southern counties, but we still have some more of this to go before it's all said and done this morning. Temperatures 50 to 59. That is our range this morning. 50 in Clintwood, 52 in Wise and Jonesville. Everybody else 55 or above with 59, the warm spot in Monticello right now. 12-hour planner heading up to about 71 today. The rain chances will finally start to dry out as we head deeper today. Sunrise, 703, sunset, 806. Dakota. All right, Brendan, thank you so much. Well, Virginia State Police are investigating a suspected murder-suicide involving three people in Norton, Virginia on Sunday. Police were called to a home where they found the bodies of two women and a man before finding a gun. The two women were identified as 53-year-old Vivian A. Wampler and 81-year-old Elizabeth A. Sturgill. The man was identified as 53-year-old Brian C. Wampler. Police believe Brian shot and killed his wife Vivian and mother-in-law before shooting himself. Williamsburg police, along with several search and rescue members, successfully found two missing men in Whitley County. Mark A. Fusen and Ronnie L. Fusen were reported missing by family members when they did not hear from them for more than two days. During their search, police were able to find Ronnie safe at a house along Highway 92 East. The team was also able to find Mark along a cliff line using a drone. He was rescued safely. We now have more details regarding a crash that shut down Highway 80 in Laurel County on Monday. The crash happened just past the Little Laurel Road intersection. Officials say a person driving a Chevy Tahoe eastbound crossed the central line in a slight curve and hit a Freightliner semi-truck head-on. The driver of the Tahoe, Joseph Gary Smith of Manchester, was pronounced dead at the scene and the passenger was flown to UK Hospital with critical injuries. The driver of the semi, John D. Philpot of London, was not hurt. With prom and graduation season approaching, there's a national effort underway to keep teens from underage drinking and driving. The latest numbers from the U.S. Department of Transportation report that about 28 percent in the 28 excuse me, 28 people in the U.S. die in drunk driving crashes. That is nearly one person every 52 minutes. Alyssa McMorris recalls the day her 12-year-old son Andrew was hit by a drunk driver in 2018 while walking with his Boy Scout troop on a side of a road. They put the phone next to Andrew and I said, Andrew, mommy is coming, mommy's coming. Mothers Against Drunk Driving launched a national campaign called Power Talks 21 to encourage parents to talk about underage drinking and driving with their children. If you're driving past the Child Advocacy Center in Lexington this month, you'll see something different. Blue pinwheels are planted all around the front of the center to bring awareness to Child Abuse Prevention Month. Wynn Stevens is the executive director of the Children's Advocacy Center of the Bluegrass. He was joined by dozens of community partners in Lexington to recognize April as Child Abuse Awareness Month and plant a pinwheel as a demonstration. We know that if kids get the help they need, almost always they go back to being the happy, healthy kids they were meant to be. But somebody has to intercede. Somebody has to step in and help get that child the assistance that they need. Mayor Linda Gorton de uh, delivered a proclamation making this entire month Children Child Abuse Awareness Month in Lexington to hopefully raise even more awareness. One million dollars was gifted to the University of Louisville in Brianna Taylor's name. Taylor inspired murals and paintings. One in particular from Amy Sherald is creating a lasting effect. The portrait landed on the cover, the cover of Vanity Fair in September 2020. 
Well, Cheryl sold it, put that money into a trust, and gifted a million dollars to the university. That money will help create a law school fellowship and undergraduate scholarships. So we're providing access and opportunity for those that want to go into social justice, that want change, that want to fight against access, that wants to fight against inequality, participation, human rights, all the different elements of social justice, and being able to provide someone with the, I guess, the academic readiness without them worrying about the financial side of things is extremely important and valuable. The scholarship will prioritize students who want to work to fight social inequality or law. Well, next Sunday is Easter, but before you pick up any Easter basket essentials, veterinarians and shelter workers are asking everyone to reconsider gifting live bunnies or chicks to your loved ones. Our Alyssa Williams has more. When spring rolls around and Easter is in full swing, many people might consider picking up a bunny or chick to make the holiday extra special for their loved ones. You know, chicks and, and bunnies are, are not um, good gifts for small children. Dr. Danica Harvey at the Appalachian Animal Hospital in Hazard says chicks can be unsafe for children to handle, let alone to have as pets, because of the diseases and illnesses these birds can carry. You know, kids have a tendency to stick their hands in their mouth. I mean, it's, it's a really um, easy way for them to catch salmonella. Dr. Harvey adds that these animals, rabbits in particular, are very fragile and require special care when handled. They can break their spines just trying to get away from you if you don't know how to handle them. Dr. William Hagens at Town & Country Animal Clinic says once the newness of these animals wear off, they end up at his clinic with rescue groups or at the local animal shelter, which is not equipped to care for them. And giving these animals as spontaneous decisions uh, is typically not just bad on a family, but it's also bad on uh, the community, uh, those who have to step up and take on that extra responsibility. And if you want to gift something cute and cuddly to your loved ones this Easter holiday, Dr. Hagen says a stuffed animal is a good alternative. They'll last you a whole lot longer, they'll cause you less problems, and they're less responsibility. All right, they can love on them just as well as they can love anything else. Helping others to make more responsible decisions when picking out Easter gifts. In Hazard, Alyssa Williams, WYMT, Mountain News. Well, Minnie Owsley with the Kentucky River Regional Animal Shelter adds that if you want to welcome a cute companion, including bunnies, into your home, but are not ready to make any commitments, fostering is the way to go. The city of Pikeville is addressing an issue with the invasive species on its Bob Amos Trail in an effort to cut down on some of the non-native plants in the Bob Amos area that are harmful to the other trees. The city is working on a control plan that kicked off yesterday with students from Pikeville High School planting some native trees along the trail behind the YMCA Director of Outdoor Recreation PJ Collins says this was a small step toward turning over a new leaf for the local plants and animals. You can work a whole lot and plant a lot of trees and have very little survivability or you can do just a little extra work and, and increase your survivability to, you know, 90, maybe even 100%. Um, so that's what we're, we're looking for. We're looking for if we plant 60 trees a day, I'm expecting at least 50 of them to survive. The students were from Kelly Scott's biology class where they have been working on lessons that go with the hands on experience they had. Well, we are less than one month away from Derby Day and we're getting our first look at the $1,000 mint julep. Well, there will be 130 silver cups, each selling for $1,000 and 18 gold cups for $2,500. Uh, one side of the cup is engraved with a thoroughbred representing Versailles where Woodford Reserve Distillery is located. The other side includes a nod to the French town of Versailles. It has a taste of orange, lemon, and pomegranate with the Woodford Reserve bourbon. Local record stores are preparing for record store day. Unfortunately, some stores are worried there will not be enough vinyl to go around. WYMT's Chaz Jenkins explains. Eastern Kentucky record stores are unsure they will have enough product for record store day. Sometimes you get what you order, sometimes you don't. It just kind of depends when it gets here. And some albums, they make only certain amounts of those. So you may get one copy, you may get five copies. Unfortunately, there are only four main vinyl distributors in the United States. One being Ingram Entertainment Incorporated who say it is a supply and demand issue with manufacturers. In some cases, these plants are backed up anywhere from 8 to 12 months to meet uh, the demand of both uh, the fans and consumers and retailers. Despite this, those with Queen City Records say they work with neighboring record stores. We're happy to say, you know, you can check 
the one in Whitesburg right roundabout, you can check them out too because they may have stuff that we don't have. Anxious for record store day, hoping there are no issues. We hope that everything goes well. We get the items that the people come here are looking for. Uh, we also have some stuff that we're giving away that day that is from record store day. Optimistic for the future as many manufacturers are planning to expand. I think it's going to take probably a good couple of years based on what we're told um, to really get to the point where we can come closer to meeting uh, fan and consumer demand. Preparing for a record store's biggest day. In Hazard, Chaz Jenkins, WYMT Mountain News. Record store day is April 23rd. Queen City Records will be open 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. on the big day. We just had this morning, the wife of a famous country music singer files for divorce from him for the third time. It's on the way. If you like warmer days, I've got you covered for a bit. If you want it to be dry, yeah, I don't have you covered there. I'll track the rain and storm chances in about three minutes.